have a hobby, something you really like to do. Something just on your own or with someone else. I like to hang out with my friends. We kick each other, we push each other down, we hit each other. We see how long we can keep the ball in the air. We see how many times in a row we can pass the ball. You've probably figured out by now, me and my friends like to play soccer. I love soccer. If I've had a bad day at school and then I go to practice, soccer always makes me feel better, no matter what. So when I go home and I want to watch women's soccer on TV, I can't find it anywhere because men's soccer is easier to find. So it seems like we, society, value men's sports more than women's sports. Is this statement true? My first example of why I think this is true is endorsements. An endorser is someone who is paid to promote a product. So I want all of you to think of an athletic endorser right now. So how many of you thought of Dak Prescott who endorses 7-Eleven or LeBron James who endorses Beats by Dre? But at any point when you were thinking, did you think of a female endorser? So one reason female endorsers are not going to get as much coverage as ma male endorsers is the types of magazines they're in. They're not going to be seen in all types of magazines. They are most commonly found in magazines aimed at female audiences, such as Good Housekeeping or Oprah Magazine. So what I mean by um, female audiences is kind of leaning towards the motherly and the diy -ish side. So, un uh, and isn't it convenient that the magazines women do actually appear in are not in teen magazines, so we have no one to look up to as a role model. In an article written by Grau, Roselli, and Taylor, they found a whopping 81% of female endorsers are either particularly or suggestively unclothed in an advertisement. So basically what the media is saying is that if you aren't pretty, you aren't getting endorsements, people who look up to you, or paid. So in an ad such as this one, this athlete is shown as pretty, but shouldn't she be shown hitting or kicking a ball? So she shouldn't be posing for a picture with her makeup and hair all done. She should be seen as an athlete. Since I researched this athlete, I know her name is Anna Kornikova. She is a professional tennis player, but you would have no idea what she does because this picture has nothing to do with her profession. Might as well just stick a tennis ball in the corner and call it Anna Kornikova in action. So, <laughs> so, wait, wait, wait. How come men can pose however they want? They can pose in a suit or they can pose without a shirt. It doesn't matter. So why is the standard so different for female and male athletes? So there are still stereotypes out here in the world, whether you knew that or not, women are stereotyped in many different ways. So if a guy takes off his shirt after scoring a goal or point, nobody seems it's out of the ordinary. And some, so for example, Cristiano Ronaldo. He takes off his shirt after almost every point, even if he didn't score it. No one has a problem with this, and some people might encourage this. But let's look at a female athlete. So Brandi Shastain, um, in 1999, she, it was, she was up for the winning uh, penalty shot in the World Cup versus China. After scoring that winning goal, she took off her shirt. Although she still, ha she still had a sports bra on, everybody flipped out. She was in the news, she was in articles, she was in advertisements, she was everywhere. Why did everybody see this differently? It made me think of why, if a male and a female do the exact same thing, one will be seen differently. Why is this? So, um, so this doesn't just happen to girls, but all girls everywhere. Or this doesn't just happen to female athletes, but all girls everywhere. So my family will tell you I'm not the most feminine human being you've ever met. I like to, I like to play soccer, I like to play field hockey, and I run track. You probably aren't picturing me in a pageant dress with a crown or anything. You probably, hopefully, you are picturing me as a, you know, average athlete who doesn't like dressing up. So my parents get on to me about this type of thing. They always say, "Oh, that's not ladylike." So what does ladylike even mean? If you look up the definition of ladylike, it comes up with an appropriate or typical of a well-bred, decorous woman or girl. So can you be gentlemanlike? If you look up gentleman in the dictionary, it comes up with an honorable man. Not how they're supposed to act, but the way they are characterized. The expression, oh, boys will be boys, it basically explains that boys can do whatever they want because we can't correct what they do. 
but if you replace boys with girls, can girls be girls? This, is, this expression does not exist. So why can you hold accountable how girls act, but you can't hold accountable how boys act? This isn't right. So um, the media is not doing very well portraying athletes. Take Serena Williams. She was recently featured on the cover of Vanity Fair. This is how they portrayed her. Instead of showing her hitting or instead of showing her hitting a tennis ball or the fact that she still played tennis seven months into her pregnancy, they show her naked and extremely exposed. So why did they do this? Serena Williams is the most decorated female athlete in the world, and yet she does still and she still does not receive the amount of respect that it that she gives. And some people might see Serena Williams as scary because she's so muscular. But if you hold up, but if you find a guy with the same muscularity as Serena Williams, he will look better than he did before if he didn't have any muscles because this is natural what we expect of the male gender, but not natural what we expect of the female gender. Okay, so my personal experiences are not the worst, but they are not the best. So we were in Spanish class and we were making gestures for words because it helps muscle memory. And two of the words were chico and chica, meaning boy and girl. A student was asked to make gestures for these words. And for chico, he did this, meaning strong and brave. And for chica, he did this, meaning pretty. I did not like this. I glared at him. I got really mad at him. I wanted to stand up in the middle of class and say, can we come up with a different gesture than that? I just thought, even why do 12 and 13 year old boys still like think this way? Where do they learn this? So another example is when, um, was recent, more recently when we were at the Halloween dance for seventh and eighth grade. I was just having a good time with my friends. We were just hanging out, dancing. And all of a sudden, a guy in my grade comes into the room. He is dressed as the worst possible costume you could ever imagine. Instead of dressing up as like a ghost or a zombie or anything but that, he comes in as a German girl. He had strawberry blonde hair with the braids. He had a skirt that was green. He had a sports bra. He had stuffed it. He had also stuffed the back. And me and my friends were so aggravated and frustrated with him because he could have dressed up as anything else, but he decided to dress up as that. We thought that he was trying to portray women as an object to look at, not a person. My last example is when we were in math and we were doing our homework. And I leaned over to this guy and I asked him, are you coming to the game? And he said, what game? And I said, we have a field hockey game against Country Day today. He's like, wait, what's field hockey? And I said, um, it's a sport, you use a stick and a ball, ring a bell. And he said, oh, so it's like ice hockey. And I thought to myself, of course he had to relate it to something masculine. But this was before women's hockey won gold in, in the Olympics. So the media is gradually getting better at portraying athletes how they should be portrayed. So you've probably heard of the new movie that came out in September called The Battle of the Sexes. It basically explains my talk in entertainment form. So Billie Jean King is played by Emma Stone and Bobby Riggs is played by Steve Carell. So Bobby Riggs calls up Billie Jean King and asks if they want to play in a match um, against each other. At first she's skeptical because she doesn't know what she's getting into, but then when she says yes, Bobby Riggs makes it a reality TV show and he is a star. A couple, he says a lot of smack about women, including, I'm not saying women shouldn't be on the court. Who would pick up the balls? And so basically, in the end, there's only one winner. I'll leave you at that. And it's such, and I know Hollywood made it a little bit more dramatic than the real thing, but at least they brought back a true, incredible story that portrays that everybody is created equal no matter what you look like or who you associate with. So here at TVS, we underappreciate girls' sports. So what I mean by that is if, a, if varsity football is playing, almost the whole school will go, even if you have no direct connection with anybody who's playing or coaching. If there's a varsity field hockey game at the same exact time as the varsity football game, only family and a few friends will go. So why is this? I'm going to challenge you. For every boys game you go to, I want you to go to a girls game as well. I guarantee it takes the same amount of skill and athleticism to play field hockey than football. 
Just remember, if you only take one thing from this talk, I want it to be the, to change the way the society and the media sees things. What I mean by that is if you're just watching TV or looking through a magazine and you see a female athlete and she's portrayed just with her beauty, I want you to dive in further. I want you to look in the internet and see what she's actually good at. See what sports she plays, what are her hobbies, see what she likes. And one more thing, I want you to see the cleats, not the heels. Thank you.